Hello Aquarius, welcome to Catalyst Energies and welcome to your astrology forecast for the full moon in Cancer. 27 to 28 degrees Cancer uh, on January 17th, 2022. So welcome back, everyone. If you're new here, welcome to this channel. Uh, thank you for being here. My name is Dee, um, and I am very grateful that you're here. If you are a patron on Subscribestar, a special thank you and a welcome to you. You really do um, allow for this content to continue to be created. And most importantly, you're investing in your own self, your own journey, your own learning. And thank you for allowing me to be part of that with you. So, um, I, you know, $3 a month seems pretty, pretty rocking to get all of this daily content to uh, help us all along, really. So Aquarius rising, Aquarius moon, Aquarius sun. If your progressed ascendant is Aquarius, all of this is going to be relevant to some degree. But of course, Aquarius rising will be the most relevant in terms of areas of life. Um, that these transits are going to be impacting. So you can check out the general astrology report for this week, second lunar quarter leading up to the Cancer full moon. That's uh, going to be, that's posted on both BitChute and YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, I'll link it at the end here. If you're on BitChute, you just scroll down and find it. And that will give you an idea of the overview of the week. This is really to look at the areas of life uh, this full moon is going to impact for all of the signs. So Aquarius, we are... Um, really closing out a big karmic cycle. And it's been happening for a while, right? It's been happening since about 2008 in terms of transformation energy when Pluto came into Capricorn. So uh, Venus has been here for us um, in the 12th house, right? This is the house of endings. This is the house of endings. This is the house of um, returning back to which we came. This is the house of the, um, the Akash and the quantum realm, right? The astral plane, and it's returning back to divinity. This is where we surrender to not only our own karma, but the um, karma that we're all part of um, in some way, shape, or form. So this this extends beyond just this mortal lifetime, although 12th house really does reference that too. But for Aquarian people, there's a big karmic cycle that is getting tied up right now. And there's going to be this dramatic cathartic like release with the with Pluto and the sun coming together at the full moon. So in the realm of surrender to the flow, surrender to the release of this karma that's potentially extends to a different lifetime, a, a family lineage. Um, maybe it is quite simply the karma of your own actions. If you have had certain interactions with people that have led you to this place in time, but ultimately a balancing of accounts and a settling of scores and a very cathartic transformational release that's going to create space for February, when we have a new moon in Aquarius and Mars and Venus come together in the 12th house and literally sow the fertile seed um, into a new spiritual um, realm, right? A surrendering to uh, a, a brand new, a brand new aspect of this spiritual realm because the 12th house also is about compassion and forgiveness and unconditional love. And when we come back to God in the 12th house, that usually is a surrender to a situation, but it doesn't have to be all like terrible, but it is a settling of a score, a balancing of accounts, and it's very cathartic and very potentially destructive. Now, we know the new moon started here, so we also um, may have already set intentions to allow these aspects to finally run their course and um, be purified through the cleanse of fire. And then we come and emerge anew um, as a part of this larger eclipse cycle um, later, like February into March into April. So, but this full moon specifically is going to highlight and um, illuminate and reflect back to us our own feelings about um, the return to the source of our real power. Um, and for the Aquarian person, this is a very sensitive moment to the needs of our own daily routine and our self-care. And I would also to say um, anything that has to do with a disciplined habit, your works, your daily routine, um, you know, what you are doing with your your day to day, the minutia. And it's not a very glamorous state. That's the fifth house. Um, 
which is where the North Node has been for Aquarius for a while, is that fifth house where we really are just shining. Uh, the sixth house is like, okay, this is the discipline stuff I have to do. It's one thing if you want to be an artist and you're like inspired by it and you're feeling the flow. The sixth house is when you have to get up and practice every day when you don't want to, but that is actually where you make the real professional. So for Aquarian people, as this cathartic release is being um, just it, it, with the full moon and, and Pluto just like really um, illuminating it, and with Pluto, the, uh, it's going to be a power struggle for sure in this area in terms of power, in terms of power, leadership and Pluto having the final word about what this really means. Um, it's going to be in what we do individually in our daily life, what we have done in our disciplines and our practices and put into place as routines, either in our healing or our wellness or exercise or diet or I mean this is about hygiene in the sixth house energetic hygiene actual like physical hygiene emotional hygiene and I would say definitely emotional hygiene with you have cancer involved and the moon especially in cancer so I mean this is going to be a check-in moment for Aquarians of just like oh did everything I put into place to um, give me a, a structure of uh, discipline and purification is it going to hold water for my emotions as these massive cycles at a spiritual karmic level come, uh, come to a close? I think this is really important for the Aquarian person just because, uh, because of the fact that we are moving into the age of Aquarius, Pluto will be coming into Aquarius in 2024 and um, transformation of self is going to be something that the Aquarian person is then going to start really going into. So it's good to know that these karmic accounts getting closed out are a ne necessary precursor before coming into uh, a completely new stage about identity. So speaking of which, we'll look at how Saturn and Mercury are in Aquarius. Mercury will be retrograde by the time it gets to the full moon but currently right now as I'm recording this on the 11th um, it is direct and it just came off of a sextile with the uh, Chiron and will do so again before the full moon in its retrograde so when you have Mercury in the first house, I mean, you're thinking about yourself a lot. You're thinking, and not in a conceited way, it's just your mental activity is like right there at the front of everything. And in Aquarius, and when it comes to being in Aquarius too, it is uh, very, it's very acute. It's very uh, intense. It's very focused. Um, it's also very innovative, of course, like I said, um, futuristic, humanitarian, um, very just genius, you know, and to have the, you're really thinking, getting at the details about who you are and why. And with Saturn here too, it almost is like, yeah, go ahead and just, you know, allow the information to just stream in right now. Um, because the real power and the real spiritual power, since Saturn is ruling, um, your 12th house is uh, about who you are is definitely on its way, right? There's no stopping the um, there's no stopping the responsibility of who Aquarius people are, and so as the mental realm is, um, like I said, our our mental realm and our thought processes and all of the mercurial aspects of the individual are so focused. And, and really taking in a lot of information about the self and about the self as an ideal in some ways. It's uh, the sextile to Chiron is um, like the laser point, you know, the laser beaming into a crystal and Chiron is like the smudge. Chiron is like the smudge on the crystal and we have to, we have to keep wiping it clean so we can have a clear, but you know, broad focus and stay concentrated. Um, and what's the third house? Well, it's our minds. The third house is our minds and our tools for learning and language and, um, the people we interface with on a daily basis in our immediate environment. So, uh, all of the mental aspects that have to do with the function of our nervous system are in the third house and Aquarian people, I mean, just experiencing, all you have to do is be yourself and you in, 
you find activation of that spark of divinity within the realm of just your conversation and your mental activity, right? I mean, this is not hard to imagine as an Aquarian person because it's so intensely intellectual and mental and in, in a very broad way. Um, you just take in a lot of zip files and large patterns of information that have to be decoded eventually. Um, and so the function of the Aquarian mind has really been getting um, smudged by all kinds of other, like all the trauma and the inner child wounding of self and all these other things have just been overlaid. And so there's always been this constant like effort of like keep wiping off the smudges on the lens so that now with Mercury in Aquarius, you know, we want to direct that laser beam of information and higher gnosis right into um our sense of self and that's through the mind. And so, um, these two, two moments of sextile this week with Chiron are just like, whoa, if you can clear away all of the, the imposed identities that are always triggering us to feel bad about ourselves, the information that can, um, uh, come in and infuse the mind in and of itself is just, a su substantial. And it can also really just heal a lot of these things. When you see the potential of who you are, like growing exponentially because you're not uh, entertaining these wounds and these wounded healer identities or victim or savior identities in your mind and in your thoughts, wow, it's just going to go, it's going to be very, um, there's a lot of potential here for the Aquarian person to clear their mind of everything other than the focus. Because if you can do that, wow, um, you are manifesting big time. So what else is going on here is that, um, did we talk about how, you know, Uranus here. I don't think we did. Uranus is in the fourth house. This is the Cancerian house of, of being stable and secure emotionally. And, you know, nothing is being aspected, but what's important is that Uranus is the ruling, our ruling planet is taking point for the Aquarius person and having it in the fourth house like this, which is about the Cancerian um, territory of emotional security, uh, deep personal power, where you feel secure, where you're faithfulness and loyalty really lies. Um, what structures emotionally are able to hold you so you can be sensitive and deep and uh, vulnerable. It's just, you know, the, the ruling planet for Aquarius being in this realm is, you know, it's the physical material world itself is where the Aquarian person draws their power from. Um, and so it's been, on, in some ways, of course, with Uranus, it's always been shifting and there's no stability. And this can be um, this kind of psychological crisis or emotional crisis normally will be enough to wake people up to uh, some sort of deeper truth. But for the Aquarian person, the Uranus is how we function. So um, to have it in the fourth house is just like even more so powerful of like, oh, yeah, um, I can harness the energy of the material world in, and transmute it into something um, even more powerful. And it has it, it's because of the friction. It's because of the movement. It's because of the freedom of the material world and the energy inherent uh, in it. So with with the North Node about to come into Taurus in the fourth house, there's going to be a lot of focus on this. So this is why this full moon in particular for Aquarius is really interesting because it is going to show like, have you put into place all of the mechanisms to hold you emotionally so that when you enter into your contractual um, arrangements as a human after your karma has been released, this cycle's karma has been released, that you are ready. And I think we are, <laughs> we have to be because the whole soul, the collective soul is about to be, um, pulling everybody in the direction of where we find ourselves already naturally, um, rooted and stabilized emotionally. And, um, you know, not everybody is comfortable with where Uranus is. And the fact that Uranus is even an agent of change, except for really Aquarius, because this is how we, um, function normally. So we're about to like be the grounding rod in some ways for the collective as they start to be drawn towards inherent value and worth um and learning from that and evolving from what that means so hmm, 
We talked about that Chiron now and, and certainly Saturn and Mercury in the first house. So there's um, a very strong, powerful presence in the first house of just kind of like, nope, this is what you are. This is who you are. Um, it's on track for exactly where it needs to be. And nothing is, is changing that. So Neptune in the second house, I mean, talk about resources just slipping through your fingers. You, they come in, it's not even coming in and coming out like, like Mars in the second house. It's just that every time there is a resource, it's just, it, it's, inseparable from everything else which is an amazing aspect of the aquarian person is that the world the the spiritual woo around them is the resource i mean at that point it's like you are you are kind of a god and i really hesitate to say something like that but you see what i mean um when you identify the world around you as spirit <laughs> you know it's like every thought is a brand new universe right and this is where the, the Chiron wounding is really holding the Aquarius person back from how truly powerful they are. So it's been, it's been difficult to have Neptune here because it's hard to grasp anything that is just spirit. So you have to learn how to utilize spirit as a resource or the, um, the plasma field as a resource, as something tangible that makes up the world around you. Um, Jupiter is instrumental in this right now. Jupiter coming into the second house is uh, managing this now. Um, it's not solidifying it. It's not giving it boundaries. Definitely not. Jupiter expands understanding, but that's exactly what it's doing is expanding understanding, um, providing a sense of management, advocacy, leadership, and and expanding the, the resources, giving them a meaning, right? Whereas with Neptune here, it's been so nebulous and um, yes, very spiritual and watery and dreamy and um, fantastical and but nothing to really grasp onto until you have something like Jupiter here. That's like, all right, it's time to start managing this and utilizing it for the greater good, because that's what Jupiter's here to do. Right. Ultimately is represents the meaning of our work together and what it can um, actually create. So. At the full moon, we see that Neptune is in a square to black moon Lilith. Now, Lilith is our primal urge to be heard, right? This is our connection to something more than just even ourselves or our own subconscious. It is our connection to prime reality. It is our connection to the original sacred feminine blueprint. And we belong to this planet if we are in this form. And, um... She, uh, Black Moon Lilith is something deeper than just us. We become a channel for this expression and she will be heard. And oftentimes we will push her away because it's so powerful and primal that, um, it's, it's doesn't really, you know, sometimes it can, um, take over and we can act out. And so it's important to be aware of your own shadow and your connection to this prime reality that will be heard. And so for the Aquarian person right now, Lilith is, well, not right now, but at the time of the full moon in the fifth house, this is our last little bit of uh, Gemini for a while. And the North node is coming out of Gemini, which is how we, ex how the Aquarian person is truly authentic is in the realm of ideas um, and expressing them without any attachment to them, but just being able to play in the realm of ideas, expressing them, writing them, researching them, playing in the realm of ideas. Cause that's what you do in the fifth house. It's play lots of, lots of dating partners, possibly an Aquarian person may have, right? Because there's never settling on any one thing or any one situation. It's just always looking at the dialectic. That is your playground, our playground as an Aquarius. Uh, cause dating and romance are very much a fifth house thing. And Gemini, it's like, you know, two sides, multiple sides. Um, you don't, you're curious, you want to discover, you want to explore in this realm, but it's in ideas. So we've had, so we've had the last year and a half going through, you know, the collective has been drawn into our, into our, um, you know, into our own garden here of where we play. And, uh, there's just something left at, at the bottom that is even deeper than us that she'll be heard. 
and she, and it's going to be tumultuous, especially in this position, squaring Neptune, which is in, um, again, the realm of resources and material reality. Um, this is a mutable square because it's Gemini and Pisces. These are mutable energies. So they're going to be malleable and flexible and they might shift and change. So that's, so that's good. But you also don't want to necessarily shift and change too much from what Lilith is trying to communicate here just because it meets this um, very powerful and dissolving um, aspect. But I don't, I don't get the sense that that's the case. Something about passion, something about um, our joy and our play and our optimism, something that allows us to take social risks and to really find our voice. Um, our voice will become a voice for something even deeper, um, but it will also... Um, there will be a challenge to this uh, really broad sense of reality, um, spiritual reality. And I know I can say for sure that I've really struggled in general with this Gemini Neptune square energy in general because um, strong opinions come out of Aquarian people because they're just tapped right in. Um, and But when you have... Uh, it's really hard to get too attached to any one thing when Neptune in Pisces is in the realm of all things material, because then it's all just, it's just energy. And so how can you um, get attached to any one thing? Lilith here is going to give you some, give us all something to have a passionate response about in our own heart space, right? Something very important wants to be heard. Um, and it will, it definitely will. And it'll come out of just our expression, um, and our authenticity. And there's something about Saturn and Lilith that is important. If you look at the beginning of this week or the lunar cycle. So let's see what else is happening here. Well, when we talk about Neptune, we know too, if we go back, yeah, let's go back because this is, these are the main aspects for the full moon themselves itself. So if we go back a week and we look at around the time that I'm recording this, which is the 11th, so the 10th, the 11th, we see Neptune comes into play again right now, but it's in a square to Mars and Sagittarius, but it's in a sextile to this sun in the 12th house. And so you know, social justice warrior all day with Mars in Sag in the 11th, right? Really crusading at this point, um, either and, and in, in the social setting as a whole. Um, but again, it's the dissolving, diffusing, and just completely uh Dis sometimes disempowering aspect of the material world and resources and just there's no there's no meaning here and so when when uh and there's no resource other than spirit so if you take that into consideration um even if this feels like you are uh pushing too hard you can apply that energy to um much more of a spiritual perspective, um, which is doing the work to clear up the karma and you finding your power within a group and dynamic process that is more about a spiritual ending as opposed to trying to fight something in the social setting uh, currently that you do want to fight. We want to fight. We want to act out in um, some sort of, you know, warrior courageous way, but it's in the realm of the spirit that this can, this energy in um, Neptune can really be applied to a lot better and, and get way more out of it, right? Instead of just fighting um, in the social sphere. And some people, some Aquarian people already are aware of this and they have become very aware of their potential for this in this area and other people haven't, right? And those people are just as equally powerful in terms of their social justice um, and, and their fight for, for justice, right? Social justice, fight for society and fight for the meaning, right? That's, that's, this is our last Sag in a while. And so it's going to get a lot more, um, certainly with all the 12th house energy, it's, it's way more into the spiritual ending of things. But again, if you look at Aquarius, a lot of the energy is moving towards and is already situated at the bottom of the chart. So it's really just about the Aquarian person's individual, um, 
personality and its own development that is the highlight of right now. But there are major karmic cycles coming to an end and you can feel them closing. So that's part of it as well as Neptune is asking us to surrender to and really trust what is coming in terms of, um, well, when Neptune comes into Aries. For, so for the Aquarius person, it's certainly going to be um, in the realm of new ideas, right? A new immediate environment. Um, you know, it's the third house is, is learning, is language, is, but it's also short-term travel and the people that you interface with on a regular basis that give you information about the world around you, right? That's the, that's the third house. And so again, Aquarius people are feeling the the wounding and the PTSD and the trauma in the realm of their nervous system and their mind because if that is fully um if that is fully engaged with their spark of divinity I mean it is it is incredible so I, th I can see, <laughs> I can see how this is really like the smudge on the lens, right? And the lens is, um, getting its laser beam right now from Mercury in the first house, but don't forget about what's happening up here. You know, you got to figure out how to like straddle two worlds at one time. And the aspect of Lilith that is in trine to Saturn the day before actually still in the fifth house, still at, but now is in a degree that's opposite of the solar eclipse in December, right? The Sagittarian solar eclipse, Black Moon Lilith was opposite of that at the time. And this is the position that she's at here and comes into a direct trine or 120 degree, degree angle with Saturn. So there is, again, something very primal, something deep, something that is wanting to ex be expressed through us. And we have to be open and allow it to do so. Um, that has to do with self-preservation. That has to do with the original blueprint, right? The sacred feminine wants to come out and will come out. Um, and this is about our individual virtuosity, right? Like becoming an inspiration to people because we are performing at our highest capacity. Well, for the Aquarian person, it's truly a performance in the fifth house, right? Our heart opening and expressing ourselves, and drama and performance is definitely part of a fifth house, any creative expression. Um, and it will be sustained and balanced out with this trying to Saturn in the first house. So you know who you are, Aquarius, you know who you are. There is a very strong scaffolding in who you are as an Aquarian. And it um, anchors you and your personality so that this uh, performance of Black Moon Lilith, whatever it is, whatever this primal aspect of yourself that needs to come out, will come out in this performance. And this was something, again, that already happened with the first quarter moon. And But watching Lilith move from that point into the square with Neptune on the full moon is something to pay attention to because um, there will still be a tumultuous and very drastic repositioning that is uh, maybe unexpected and is certainly going to challenge our sense of oneness with the world around us, if you know what I mean. So um, Aquarius, crazy times, but ultimately you're looking at a big karmic cycle coming to a close and um, a culmination emotionally of um, what in our actual daily routines that we have control over um, have we created that will actually sustain us emotionally as these karmic cycles come to a close. So that's going to do it for Aquarius. Thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you're interested in a reading or energy work to support your process, you can follow the links in the description box or you can stick around at the end of this video and get some more information about how to subscribe uh, to Subscribestar and how to just get more information about Catalyst Energies in general. So I love you, Aquarius. Thank you for being here. Uh, take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Have a blessed week. I'll see you at your new moon, or I, sh I should say our new moon. I'll see you at our new moon in uh, Aquarius uh, in February. And until then, take care of yourself. Bye. Mm -hmm.